Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us as we formally announce Gary Gate as the Roy D. Simmons Jr. Head Men's Lacrosse Coach at Syracuse University. We'll begin today with an op opening remarks from John Wildhack, followed by remarks from Coach Gate, and a question and answer session with Coach Gate. Following that, John Wildhack will be available uh, for a question and answer session back at the podium. Media, please raise your hand, and we'll come around with a microphone to call on you for questions. And with that, I'll turn it over to John Wildhack. Tyler, thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate everybody who's attending. It's such a beautiful day in central New York. We should really do this outside, Tyler. Um, but uh, on behalf of Syracuse University and Syracuse Athletics, I'm extremely proud and privileged to officially introduce Gary Gate as the fifth head coach in the history of our men's lacrosse program. Gary's accomplishments in the sport have been well chronicled by many. He is universally recognized as the greatest player in the modern era. He is the Michael Jordan of lacrosse. His coaching success as an assistant at Maryland and as head coach of our women's program places him amongst the very best coaches in the sport. His knowledge and his passion for the sport of lacrosse is unrivaled. He's an innovator and a motivator. I've had the pleasure of seeing Gary lead our women's lacrosse team and since my arrival here almost five years ago, Coach Gate has a keen commitment to his student athletes, his scholars, citizens, and maximizing their individual and collective talents on the lacrosse field. Succeeding Coach Desco is a tall order for anyone. Coaching Syracuse lacrosse comes with great expectations, but Gary is more than capable of leading our men's program back to the championship level that we all covet. I look forward to working with Coach Gate, his staff, our current team, our alumni, and our fans as we all work together to return Syracuse lacrosse to championship weekend and build upon the unrivaled success in history that Syracuse men's lacrosse has. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Gary Gate. Well, I am getting older, so I do need glasses. But uh, first of all, I'd, I'd really like to thank uh, John Wildhack, uh, Chancellor Severud, for looking within and finding uh, myself as a potential candidate for this position. And I'm completely thrilled and honored to be here. And there's been uh, just uh, an amazing amount of uh, support from my former teammates, friends, um, fellow players, all sorts of people have uh, just been reaching out and it's been amazing. I thought I would uh, talk a little bit about, you know, why I became a coach and how I became a coach. Uh, give you a little background. Uh, I don't think I've ever really talked about that when I took the women's job. But, um, you know, for me personally, it, it, I, I give a lot of credit to my father who found a way to allow myself, my brothers, to play the game of lacrosse when we were young. And uh, he helped organize the first teams I've ever played on. And then he took the next step and he went out and he found the best coaches to help me develop, help me improve, and help me learn. Uh, I was very fortunate when I was uh, about 12 years old, my uh, dad found a gentleman by the name of Ron McNeil. And Ron was a Hall of Fame Canadian player he played in the professional leagues down here in the 70s and uh, one of the all-time greats in Canada in box lacrosse. And my dad somehow convinced him to coach a bunch of 12-year-olds. Um, and it, it was the reason that, that I'm coaching today because what he did for a group of 12-year-olds was amazing. He was a forward-thinking coach he didn't look at our age, he looked at what we could do, and then he proceeded to teach us how to play the game. 
But more importantly, he taught me how to learn the game. And, and it was pretty simple. It was, you know, he explained why you did every drill. And I think that that's what got me started in thinking about how to develop as a player. Like, why is that guy scoring 10 goals? Why, why is that defender able to stop that person? And I learned back then to watch, learn, ask myself why, and then go out and practice, work hard, and get it done. And, uh, you know, a after doing that, for working with him for a couple years, I got my first coaching opportunity at the age of 15 with my twin brother, Paul. And we took on a, a a 12-year-old team, and uh, it was quite an experience. Obviously, I utilized a lot of what I learned from Ron and, uh, you know, started doing some things a little bit different as well. And uh, that, that, you know, gave me a, a little, you know, bug to be a coach, and, and we really enjoyed it. Paul and myself, we went on to the uh, provincial championships. I think we finished second with our team. Um, and unfortunately, the next year, things got way too hectic with playing, and we were unable to coach, but it gave me that first taste. And to be honest, I didn't think that coaching would ever be a career. Growing up in Canada, coaching is simply a volunteer uh, position, and every coach I've ever had in Canada has been a volunteer. So it was, you know, when I was finished here at Syracuse and went down to work, uh, I moved down to Baltimore. I didn't realize that uh, I didn't even think about coaching because, again, I just wasn't really focused on it. So it was, uh, it was an amazing opportunity when uh, Cindy Timshaw uh, called and said, would you be interested in, in coaching women's lacrosse at the University of Maryland? And uh, I hadn't thought about coaching, like I said, at all. And then sure enough, I said, you know what? I just had a, a baby girl a month ago. This is something I would definitely be willing to try. And uh, I took an approach using what I learned uh, as a 12-year-old. I, uh, I started coaching with the idea of teaching and explaining why you do things, and creating new ways in the women's game to improve. Whether it was stick work, dodging, I, I, was, I used my ability to break down the game and the skills and teach it to the young ladies. And um, fortunately, those young ladies had uh, amazing success. So that, that really got me hooked into being a coach. And from there, I knew I wanted to be a coach. And uh, I truly loved it. Um, you know, over the years, uh, I've drawn a ton from all the coaches I had. And, and certainly one of the greatest that I've, I've ever had is Roy Simmons Jr., along with John Desco. Um, great mentors, great friends. And, you know, coming to Syracuse, they taught me an incredible amount about how to build a team, a championship team. And that's what I think I pulled away uh, from Syracuse the most in the coaching world was you need to build chemistry, you need to have, you need to know your players, and you need to create a family atmosphere. And when, it, when you, all those things come together, you can almost put in any X and, X's and O's, but you'll come out on top if everybody works as one team, one unit. And, and that was an invaluable lesson uh, from Syracuse. Roy, John, uh, Roy Three was there. And I know Leland was there back when I, I played. And they've all had impacts uh, on that. And uh, that is definitely uh, you know, one of the things that I want to bring to this program is, is heighten the level of, of chemistry and, and really make the uh, program uh, 
take it to the next level on the offensive end and really create that chemistry uh, like I remember it being, where, you know, in the practice, uh, guys were experimenting, trying things so that they could use them in a game. But they were things that were unique, never been done before type plays. And I'm certainly thrilled to have that opportunity to try and bring that back uh, to the program and, and create a real buzz around the way Syracuse plays again. And uh, that's definitely going to be one of my, my big focuses. Um, it's, um, it's important that I, uh, I think that I state that, you know, this is an amazing opportunity. You know, I, I, some people have asked, well, why do you think the men's position is better than the women's position? And to be honest, um, it's, it's not better. It's just something that I've wanted to do. And it, I've had opportunities in the past, and I've stayed with the women's game. I had opportunities to move and go to the men's side, but I truly believe that my value at the time was on the women's side. But as, as time moves along, you turn down opportunities, you uh, think good thoughts, you work hard, and an opportunity like this comes along at the right time. And to be able to come back here and coach at Syracuse is certainly a dream come true. It, it was a dream to come back and coach the women, but now to have that opportunity to be on the men's side is unbelievable. And I uh, truly thank uh, John, uh, John Desco, uh, all of the coaching staff uh, on the men's team. I got to thank all my staff and support people on the women's side, uh, Caitlin D. Felice and Sydney Preca, Jason Gebhardt, um, have been spectacular. Uh, they, they really um, have made my job easy. Chelsea Lavelle is our director of ops, been amazing. And we just uh, look to continue that, except one story up. Um, we'll continue to support and work with the women's program. I will give them whatever they need, whatever I can do to help, I'll be there for them. And I look forward uh, to the day when we both can raise the national championship. And uh, hopefully that will be very soon. Thank you all. Thank you. Hey, Gary, congratulations. Thank you. Um, this has kind of been speculated on pretty much since you came back to campus. How long have you thought about having this, this job? <laughs> to be honest, I really haven't. I, you know, I get dialed in, I'm focused. I, I love my job. I love coaching with the, the young ladies. Um, they've been incredible. And so I really haven't spent any time thinking about it. You know, it wasn't until it actually happened that I, you know, my head started spinning and I had to try and figure out, you know, is this the right move? And of course, you know, it was an instant yes for me. But, you know, we'll make sure that, that we find someone good for the women to help keep that program where, where it is and, and win their first national championship. Coach Kate, you touched on uh, you know playing for Coach Simmons, Coach Desco. What were the conversations that you've had over these last couple of days with Coach Desco? And he touched on that how you maybe want to you know keep him involved into the program. Uh, what do you see with him moving forward? Well, he's already been a tremendous help. He's he's reached out uh, two or three times already to say, you know, come player updates. Don't forget about this player. I got this player going. So he's been tremendous in that way. And before the press conference, he called me and, uh, you know, said I, he had an appointment, but he wished he was here and that um, whatever I needed, he's willing to help. And we're, we've already set up a meeting to sit down and talk about the players and his opinions and, 
and get his input. And I certainly told him that you're welcome to come out to any practice. You know, an extra set of eyes never hurts. And enjoy, enjoy watching, say hi to the kids anytime he wants. And, uh, you know, I think that's important because, you know, he's been such an incredible champion for this program and he deserves that. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll have opportunities in the near future to honor his greatness and what he's done here. Hey, Coach Ryder Pugh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, he, he, as a player, obviously, you helped lead this program to the golden age of Syracuse <laughs> lacrosse. And now you have that opportunity as a coach, kind of what John said a minute ago, as a head coach, to bring this program back to that um, poetic, whatever the word is. Can you describe that opportunity? Oh, it, it, it's just amazing, you know. Um, I, I do have you know, some experience on the men's side, but it's, it's mostly been international and professionally. But um, what I love about my life and the opportunities, I've had the chance to coach in almost every style of the game, box, field. Uh, we're now doing Olympic six on sixes, and I've worked with the net Canadian national team on the men's side, the women's side. Um, so I've had a lot of experiences with every style of play and I think that's going to really help me and that's going to be a big key I think into being creative and trying to evaluate the players and come up with a, a style of play that will allow us to hopefully bring back 20,000 in the dome to come watch us play so it'll be between style and flair but always has to have substance and success. And I think that's one of the things uh, back in the golden era, you didn't see very many missed behind the backs. You didn't see very many missed trick plays. It's because they were vetted in practice till they could, we all knew we could do it in a game. So you didn't see many mistakes just doing it to do it. It was well rehearsed, well practiced long before we ever got to the game, and that we'll use that same strategy with the, the team this year. Uh, this is certainly the case on the women's side, too, but when you look at the expansion of the talent pool, there's never been more teams and players on the men's side. How do you set that high expectation with the sport growing and more teams saying that they expect to win a national championship every year? Well, uh, you know, watching, watching the men's games, it, it is true that um, the talent pool has grown dramatically at the high school level. And it, it unfortunately it hasn't grown on the men's side. Um, on the counterpart side, when I started coaching women, I think there was 30 Division I teams, and now we're at 130. So the growth has been tremendous. Um, but with that said, I think uh, moving the recruiting date back to September 1 of the junior year will help us. I think it'll take away a lot of the guesswork. And I think there's still um, opportunity to find the best players now that you wait till their junior year. It's much easier to identify a top player as they've matured a little bit physically and as a player. Um, so I think the other key will be to, to strategize our recruiting and make sure that we're recruiting for a specific position, specific players. And uh, I think one of my focuses is to, is to be really targeted on the recruiting and, and maybe reduce the size of the classes a little bit, um, but just make sure we get the top kids in each position. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Gary. You mentioned today and a couple other times you have had a lot of other opportunities to coach the men's programs. Uh, first, any, any you can identify, and secondly, did it have to be? If you're going to coach the men, did it have to be Syracuse? Was this the only school, you know, your alma mater that you would have left uh, for, you know, women's for the men's job? Um, well, I was here when there was an opportunity. I'm not going to name schools because uh, they've hired great coaches and, and moved forward and found the right coaches for their programs. But um, there were opportunities, and, and it was an easy decision for me. Um, 
you know, the last time I was here, my daughter was about to come in and I, I made the commitment to her to coach her and I did and I stayed and I love Syracuse. So glad I'm still here or this opportunity may have never come. Gary, hi, congratulations. Thank you. Um, so congratulations, first of all. And second of all, you talked a little bit about recruiting, and I'm curious if you've made any kinds of decisions about your staff. Obviously, that's going to be an important part of recruiting going forward. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting close. We, we should have some staff named in the next couple of days, I would hope. So we're working uh, very quickly, and I think that's important. Uh, I know uh, Pat's out on the road right now. He's uh, watching kids, so he's well working, doing his job, which is awesome. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, you know, fill in the staff in the next few days. Uh, kind of along those lines, Coach Keith, how do you attack this next month? Uh, you know, you're walking into it, and, and it's not an easy time. You're walking into it when all these tournaments and everything are going on. For you, what's this next month going to look like? Well, amazingly, uh, I've done a lot already. I've gotten up to speed with uh, the recruits, the players. Um, so now it's it's back to recruiting. It's going to be the focus for the summer. You know, I'll reach out to I, I reached out to the team in a Zoom, uh, introduced myself. Well, you know, gave them a little a, a little blurb on what we're looking to do, and then. Uh, I'll follow up with them individually over the summer, spend some time on a Zoom or a call or FaceTime or something, get to know them while we're out there recruiting and, and finding that next group of uh, amazing players. So that's kind of what the summer is. It, the, the hard parts, I had a schedule all set to go, and now i got to develop a completely different one. and. Uh, you know, I'll be still doing some things on the women's side because I've made some commitments. Um, but I'm hoping that we get a new coach in here and they can help me out on some of my commitments on the women's side. Coach, uh, two-parter, just what you can say, how, how you would define the impact that John Desco's had on you. And then secondly, to be a part of history, to be on the women's side and the men's side at one school, just how important that is and kind of what you take on your shoulders with that. Well, well, I think going back to my playing days, John, you know, he was, you know, very, uh, he was the structure, the backbone of our program. You know, uh, Coach Simmons was amazing. He was spiritual. He was uh, unique. He was different. But John really dialed in the game and what we needed to do to have success. And I think it made me realize that you have to be able to do both and teach both the game and then take the other side that uh, Coach Simmons always did, uh, you know, from developing talent to getting you to feel good about yourself to giving you the confidence to go out and make plays. So John, he's also been a great support while I've been here as a women's coach. And to, to be able to sit down with them and navigate the waters here when I first took over was amazing. Uh, we've spent a lot of time over the years together um, socially. Uh, our, we're, we're good friends, our wives are good friends, and we've had a lot of uh, fun activities and done a lot of fun stuff. And just being around them gives you an opportunity of, you know, I'm pretty calm, but he's, he's really, become a very calm coach and, and collective, and he really thinks about everything, and I think I've learned a lot uh, from him about that. Uh, Gary, you had so much success here as a player. Um, how hard is it going to be to match that as now the head coach of that program, considering the guys you're following? Are, are you feeling that, that burden, that pressure? Yeah. When I, when I took the job on the women's side, you know, the job was to be a top five team and win a national championship. Well, I got half of it right. <laughs> we were consistently in the top five. Unfortunately, we, we got to the game three times but didn't get it done. And I, I you know, if there's one thing I wish I had a redo, it would be, you know, one more time, one more shot. But 
that's the way it goes, and, and I understand that. Um, the pressure on the men's side, it's a pressure I put on myself all the time. Any coaching job I've ever taken, the goal's been the same as to, to win the championship, and I've been very fortunate that uh, I've been successful a lot of times, but it, it's really, it's really easy when that's what your life's about, and that's what I'm focused on, is, is building teams to be successful, and I, I don't really put much pressure on it. Number one thing that I always do is, is I truly start to believe it, and then I start convincing the team that it's certainly capable, and I get them to believe that they can do it every single year. So I think that's uh, always been one of my keys is the belief and how much I care about it and passing that on to the young players. Hey, hey Gary, could you uh, pick out a vignette or, or pick out a, a player from your past that you said, try this move, try this dodge, where maybe they were a little unsure, but you encouraged them to try it and you found it enhanced the game or enhanced the player's play? Well, there's, there's certainly been, you know, when to dodge, what type of dodge, you know, on the professional side with the men international. Um, I remember working with uh, Mark Matthews, a big tall player for Team Canada, and, and he's uh, such an amazing player. I had him when he was a bit younger, and I'm like, why don't you try this move, a little underneath move, because, you know, your strong left, just bait him make that move and and he did and you know he was one of the the big reasons why uh i think it was 2014 canada won the world championship so and on the women's side you know there's been a multitude of players that i've been fortunate enough to coach and it's not about teaching one skill it's about trying to teach them all the skills and i think that that'll be the same philosophy with these guys if if you can do this, then you should be able to do that. Well, if you can do that, you need to learn this and really provide a, a wide array of options. Uh, I've found over the years that most players tend to do the same things over and over again. But I think the truly great players are the ones that change it in the situation. You know, like people have a habit of shooting top right. Well, you know, overhand, and you'll see that shot 60, 70 percent of the time out of that player. But I think the really great goal scorers shoot anywhere, and they take what's given to them, and they may shoot underhand, behind the back, switch hands, whatever it is, there's not really a consistency so that goalies can't guess or bait or do all that. So I think uh, we'll be teaching these kids that there's a lot of options, trying to break habits, and and really help develop some of the next great players. Gary, John didn't have to look far to find a qualified alum to take over the program. There's a lot of qualified alums to take over the women's program. At the end of the day, would you prefer they keep it in the family? I think, you know, our administration will find the best fit for the program to lead it and, and allow them to continue as a top five program and compete for a national championship. I have confidence in that. I know there's a lot of support for the alums. I certainly love my alums and support them, but uh, know that it'll be the decision of the administration. You said it was your dream job. It's almost like you had two dream jobs. How difficult was it though after 13 years to you know, switch over from the women's program and leave. You're not really leaving because you're on campus, but to leave that to the men's program. Well, I, I think that's realistically, that's the only thing that made it easy was the fact that I could stay on campus. I can, you know, continue having relationships with the, the young players on the women's team and helping them as much as I possibly can. Whereas if I had to leave, and go somewhere else, it, it may have been a different decision. But certainly, you know, it may have been a decision like I've had in the past where I've turned it down and said, no, I'm gonna stay with the, the, the ladies of Syracuse because I love Syracuse. And, you know, it made it easy when it happened here. 
Hello again. Uh, you mentioned, I think, an earlier quote that your head was spinning, your head was buzzing when you got this opportunity. Uh, you played in the championship game on Sunday, on Memorial Day weekend, and I know that Monday, you know, John was still doing on the road some doing recruiting, and then four or five days later, your word started to come out that this was happening. Um, can you, any sort of way to pinpoint a timeline? When, when did you know the job was open? When did you shake hands with John Wilack saying, I'm taking it? Very tight window. Can you kind of take us through how and when everything happened, please? Um, it was certainly uh, after you know, our championship game. Um, and I think it was you know, just after uh, John uh, had decided to his retirement. And then I was called, and, and that's when I found out everything. You know, it was his opportunity. It, was, it wasn't that long ago. It was after in decision. Uh, it was a you know nice chat with John, and we we decided, and he asked, and I said absolutely. It didn't take me more than about two seconds, and uh, then it was done. Pretty simple question. You spent uh, about a fourth of your life here in the Syracuse area. What does Syracuse University mean to you? Well, I can tell you a story uh, about coming back here and uh, Dr. Gross, the previous athletic director here that hired me for the women's program, had uh, sent Matt Palem out when I was living in Denver coaching the Colorado Mammoth and he was asking me if I'd be interested in, in coming back to coach the women's team and I told him, you know, it's awful cold there. I don't know if I can handle that. And I said, I'm not interested. And, uh, you know, what drew me back was a year later, he sent Matt Palin on again. And he called me and he said, I, re I remember it very well. I was uh, laying in a pool in, in on a corporate retreat for Cronky Sports down in uh, Mexico with all our sponsors. And uh, he called and I was floating in the pool and he said, I need to talk to you right now. Do you have a minute? I, don't say no. That's all he said, don't say no. And what it really came down to was, you know, I, I looked at the people, the, the area I lived in in Colorado, and it was pretty flashy. And uh, I think my daughter, going into eighth grade, she uh, came to me and said, Dad, Dad, I want a Louis Vuitton bag. And I said, what? I said, y you're not even in eighth grade yet. Well, yeah, but all my friends have them. And that's, that was one of those little things, magic moments that I was thinking about when Daryl called. It was, you know what I love about Syracuse? The people, absolutely. The people are down to earth. You know, it's, it's a blue collar community the way I grew up and it, it felt like home with the people. So that's the reason that I came back. I love the, you know, the university and I love the people in the community. And that's why I'm still here. All right, thanks, Coach. Good were, afternoon, Lindsay. You were there the other day when I asked Coach Desco whether if, if he had uh, wished to come back, if he could have, and he said he thinks so. I will ask you, did, did you feel a coaching change had to be made? And once you decided it would be made, did you interview anybody else? Well, it, was, it was John's decision, and it was, as John said, we had multiple discussions, and those were very, you know, very, very substantive discussions. In, in, um, you know, very uh, cordial discussions, and then John came to the decision to, the time was right for him to retire. And once we knew that, um, you know, I engaged with uh, Jamie Mullen, who's our sport administrator for lacrosse, Herm Fraser, who's our deputy AD, senior deputy AD, chief of staff. Um, and there were two alums uh, who played lacrosse here, I'm not gonna name their names, who have tremendous respect for their knowledge of the sport, I reached out to them. There was, there was, so we came up with a very, very short list. Obviously, Gary was, was that, and then we vetted that. 
you know, carefully, and it became quite clear to me is, is the best person to lead our men's program was someone who's already here in Coach Gate. Um, and, and the charge was not, let's, let's find, it wasn't let's find the best alum to be our coach. Let's identify the best person to be our head coach. And clearly that's Gary. John, good to see you in person again. Likewise, Nico, Absolutely. congratulations, by the Thank way. Thank you, appreciate that very much. Um, a similar question, but obviously it did come together quickly. And what does that mean, or how does that speak to Gary's credentials and the idea of keeping it into the family? You know, again, I think his, his credentials are unmatched, as, as I recited at the beginning. And you know, it became pretty clear, and, and it didn't take a long time. For, for me to come to the decision um, that, all right, that the best person to lead this program was Gary. So, you know, it moved, it moved quickly. Um, and it was clear to me that, you know, Gary was and is the best candidate, the best person to do this. And it's the right time and the fact that he knows our culture, the Syracuse culture, he mentioned it in terms of the community, right? Blue collar people down to earth an association with our program, his success that he's had here. I mean, those are, you know, those are clear-cut advantages. John, just what you can say about, kind of go a little bit further with that. When you first came back here to Syracuse, what it was about Gary that stood out to you as the women's lacrosse head coach and as a person, and what's kind of carried all the way through to now to make this the right decision? I just think the connectivity he has with his team you know, his, his connectivity, he really knows how to communicate. He knows how to connect with his team. He knows how to, how to manage. He knows the right words at the right time. It was, it was actually, it was really, it was a great experience for me to be with the team, you know, in Maryland for the national semifinals of the championship game and, you know, four days together and we spent a lot of time together. And just, again, when you get to see how somebody, you know, how somebody leads, their program and the way that they do it, the involvement of their assistant coaches, the engagement with the players, uh, parents of players, you know, all that I just found very, very impressive. And then obviously his, his success, you know, the record speaks for itself. Hi, John. I uh, wanted to ask you, it's good, thank you. Wanted to ask you the same thing I asked Gary about the expectation mm -hmm. of winning a championship in an expanded and very talented uh, field on the men's side. And obviously you pick Gary because you feel like he's the best guy to address that, but how do you, how do you approach that knowing what, what the game is now? Well, because you're right, the, there's, there's clearly more talent than there's ever been, right? And that talent is just not in the three pockets. It used to be primarily central New York, you know, the Baltimore area and Long Island. You know, now it's national, right? You look at our roster, kids that we have, and you look at programs that have launched. To me, I think this is an advantage for us because we're the best program in the history of the sport with 11 national championships. You know, we've got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of All-Americans. So I look at that as a recruiting advantage, frankly. And I look at how we resource the sport, and I look at our facilities is, you know, Ensley, Wool Field, the Dome, Syracuse Education, Academics. I think we can offer a recruit either men's lacrosse or women's lacrosse. We can offer them an unparalleled experience. So yes, you know, there are expectations. Let's embrace those expectations and let's leverage the success and leverage the attributes that we have. And, and to do exactly that is to build championship programs for both men's and women's lacrosse. You know, the goal, and Gary and I have talked about it, I see, you know, I want Memorial Day weekend to be really crazy. I, you know, I want, I want to be hopping from, you know, fr Friday to women's semis, to Saturday to men's, and the Sunday to women's championship. To, I want my Memorial Day weekend selfishly, and I want it for all of our fans. You know, I want it to be consumed with lacrosse. Mario? John, do you have a timetable on, on the women's side now uh, of when you want to, to move forward with that as well? Yeah, Mary, we're in the process of, again, you know, vetting candidates, potential candidates. Uh, Kim Keener Kirkpatrick is the sport administrator for women's lacrosse. Uh, Kim is leading our search efforts. And again, um, I'm not going to give you a specific timetable, 
We want to move with alacrity at the same time as we want to be very, very thorough in our research of, of potential candidates. Um, I will tell you that, you know, candidates that have emerged to date uh, are outstanding. You know, so wherever, whatever decision we make, we will have a championship caliber coach that leads our women's program. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Tyler.